Next, I want to talk about this, actually. Um, the Fear of God show happened for 2023. I spoke about it briefly on another podcast episode, and I mentioned how I thought the shoes were maybe the standout pieces there for the most part. The shoes definitely the standout. I thought the clothing was a little bit meh for me personally, but I thought the shoes was a standout. But the interesting thing is, having read the interview, that Jerry Lorenzo did with Vogue Business, I've now gotten a greater understanding as to why maybe the flipping clothes aren't that great because damn almighty, I had no idea the business that these guys were doing. This is a headline courtesy of Vogue. It says, fear of God could grow to a $1 billion for Jerry Lorenzo. That's not the goal, which is dumb because clearly it's the goal. Um, and it kind of makes me think of that flipping hilarious video of Jerry Lorenzo being asked at some flipping church place somewhere why his clothes are so expensive and him basically saying because God has called him to excellence which is hilarious it's kind of the streetwear version of like those pastors who justify buying private jets so they can go and spread the ministry uh, because God wants me to be in like seven places in one day so I need my own private jet that's like you know 500 million and I need the, the church to pay for it that sort of nonsense so clearly money is some sort of a motivator in some way shape or form but having read this interview which is really good this feature it kind of does highlight the struggles that come with success which is strange to say that but they are suffering from success because somehow within you know within an effort to try to make a more affordable line with having essentials right fear of god essentials he's also created a little bit of a mini monster and a kind of um you know a staple within streetwear just in general in people's clothing wardrobes and whatnot because even myself being a firm flipping essentials hater i can't hate the recent look that i saw that i featured on a podcast was pretty pretty good the basics or just the colors the you know the, the flipping silhouettes the shapes the fabrics that just look really nice really luxurious especially when you consider it's meant to be the quote-unquote diffusion line or the cheaper version of fear of god but from what you can hear from what he's saying essentially they want to separate them and make fear of god to be essentially the essentials and then to be the main fear of god ready to wear line to be maybe somewhere where he can maybe explore some other themes motives shapes whatever it may be but at the moment they're kind of feeling a little bit samey but it just need to kind of give some respect to the guy for being able to build a business on the side that was out of necessity or maybe the way to kind of give back and feed the kids and kind of stop people asking him questions about why stuff's so, so expensive and in the process he has essentially built a business that is close to a billy close to a billy on the side which is pretty crazy um let me see if i can find it there's a quote here towards the bottom here about the essentials ba, 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 ba. Where is it? I think it's around here somewhere. Yeah, let's actually read this. I'll, I'll, read, I'll just read the thing to you so you can give an idea on what the vibe is saying. Um, so it says here, let's, let's, start from this, let's start from here. It says, the morning after the debut runway show that was 10 years in the making and which took 10 days of style, Fear of God found that Joe Lorenzo sits with LA Milk Studios contemplating the long anticipated landmark achievement that's suddenly behind him. He says, I'm coming uh, around from four hours of sleep and trying to process it, he says. Comparing the live format to that of his first seven collections, all revealed via lookbooks, he said, in the past, I would have more time with the collection before it was shared. But when you do a show, it's as if you're almost experiencing it for the first time as the audience does too. The show was held at the Hollywood Bowl in LA, an outdoor concert venue, 10 minutes from Lorenzo's home and a regular date and destination for Lorenzo and his wife Desiree, um, which is um, considered the last iconic venue in LA. I actually have to give the guy pre credit for doing it in LA. I feel like, I've always said it, but I feel like the insistence and the flipping begging um, and just the overall desperation a lot of these streetwear and menswear brands have with always displaying stuff in Paris uh, Fashion Week is really annoying and kind of nauseating, especially some of them that are, I feel like very much tied to their location and where they're at. For instance, like Awake, you know, a streetwear brand, you know, New York based with the founders being intrinsically part of the New York fabric for them to have a showroom out in Paris to flip and show their wares makes absolutely no sense to me in the slightest. Oh, what happened there? Why can't I see it? My thing stopped. Oh, okay, I'm getting the, or the the flipping rainbow sign here for the moment. Bear with me a second whilst this flipping loads again. I think I'm talking too long. But anyway, yeah, cool. So, um, as I was saying beforehand, I feel like 
a lot of these brands shouldn't be going to Paris just because everyone else is going to Paris. I feel like a lot of these brands, especially when they're tied to a specific location and they have founders who are, you know, who basically use where they're from as a inspiration board, the sounding board for what they do. It just makes it no sense to me when they didn't go and pull their brand up from its roots and transplant it over to Paris just so it can kind of be looked upon as a serious brand or whatever it may be. I feel like sometimes having it where you're from, having it where you're at, having it where the brand is birthed from kind of gives it another feel, another energy, another type of vibe. And it kind of makes me think of, that's why I felt like, you know, Heron Preston going back to New York was a really smart decision. And, you know, basically Jerry Lorenzo decided to do his debut show in LA. It's also a smart decision. Most likely he'll probably end up going to Paris anyway because all, all menswear, fashion, streetwear dudes seem to think flipping Paris is the Mecca. But I would love to, to there for there to be more people doing their brand presentations, whatever it may be, collections, where they're actually at, where they're actually from, where their brand is birthed from. It just gives it a whole different vibe, a whole different feel. And also, especially for a place like LA, you would imagine, which I would imagine doesn't really have much of a fashion scene, especially in the conventional or traditional calendar, that would be a good way to kind of somewhat build that community around it, probably. Who knows? Um, it continues. Book ended by live performances from English songwriter Sampha and American rapper Pusha T. It was an elevatory and vividly expressive leap forward in, in Free of God's evolution that specifically um, connected Lorenzo's own identity, his Christianity, his ancestry, his life experience with his established design codes. An exploration of American luxury, his cinematic scope fell akin to a Ralph Lauren Spring 2023 show in delivery, while summer tendency being rude to experience rather than fantasy. I think it's very difficult to talk about revelation and vividly and evolution and shit when you have Sampha and Pusha T. I feel like that was one thing that kind of let it down. It kind of felt like I was watching some NTS fashion show having Sampha on there again. Like, I would die on the hill that I think Sampha is incredibly overrated. If people think Frank Ocean is overrated and they think his fans need to move on, then I think Sampha fans also need to do the same. Like, Sampha, I've never really been the biggest fan of his. And I think even now, more so in the 2023 era of these incredible singer songwriters out there, he just doesn't cut the muscles for me in any way, shape, or form, personally. It kind of feels a bit dated, but we continue. Um, even when not running on fumes, it was most observed that Lorenzo makes poor a subject for a business interview. His primary obsession are shapes, drapes, and being true to his vision of a brand and self-expression. After a peripatetic um, preface, he launched Fear of God a decade ago in 2013 with no formal training and simply conviction that there was a gap in the market. I have to give this guy credit though, because when Fear of God first started, myself and maybe others could see the direct inspiration from, you know, Hedy Slamen, Saint Laurent, maybe some bits and bobs of Hedy Slamen, Dior, maybe some Rick Owens and whatever it may be, right? We could definitely see it in there. It was clear as day. But I think over time, he's used those other designers as maybe as a template, but he's also been able to imbue his own code, his own taste, his own idea, artistic direction, whatever it may be, into the clothes that he makes. So that now when you see, see Fear of God, you don't think of like an athletic knockoff version of Saint Laurent. You think of just Fear of God. He's got particular shapes, silhouettes, whatever it may be over the years that he's fine-tuned and made his own. And I feel like that is really hard to do in the modern era, especially when you think about the number of brands out there vying for your attention, your dollars, to be able to to make a, a hoodie a pair of pants a pair of shorts with no branding on it and for somebody to instantly recognize what it is that definitely shows that you got it you know what i mean that you're that person that you know what you're doing and you definitely you know hit on something it continues um of targets numbers and strategy positioning and other such conventional metrics he observes i'll never find peace by thinking that we're on trend or that we're doing what the world thinks we're doing I honestly find more peace in waters where I'm swimming by myself. The call of our brand is to do a new thing. And that new thing doesn't necessarily have benchmarks. It doesn't necessarily have goals that are quantifiable. That's nice to say, honestly, for him, when you're making a billion, essentially making, you know, pastel colored hoodies and sweatpants. But I think if the, he wasn't making good money and the business wasn't successful, he'd be caring about metrics. You know what I mean, it's kind of when rich people say, oh, it's not about the money, man. Money actually doesn't make you rich. It's like, yeah, OK, cool. Give me the money first. Let me experience that first. You know what I mean, come on, brothers. Um, anyway, it continues. However, elsewhere in Milk Studios, which Fear of God uses as base operation during the show, those numbers to be gleaned. As part of Fear of God's second decade plus plan, sorry, Lorenzo recently took on his first CEO. 
Alfred Chang, who began his duties in mid-March. He first encountered um, Fear of God seven years ago when he was working at U.S. retailer Paxson and began pantering with Louis, uh, Lorenzo sorry, to offer a then nascent um, essentials line. Then known as Fog, Essentials has since grown into the commercial juggernaut streetwear staple across US, UK, China, and beyond. So can you imagine there's there's gonna become a time somewhere along the line where we'll see essential store and fear of God stores. They won't be all under this one brand. They'll be separate stores. Imagine that'll be crazy, isn't it? You build it, you build a diffusion line so big you need its own you know, dedicated store to sell stuff. I could just selling so much of it. It continues to say in the first press interview as Fear of God CEO, Chang envisions future expansion in staffing, revenues, categories, and geographical presence of the brand, characterizing current annual revenues as between 200 million and 300 million. He adds, as we look forward, that we see a path of half a billion dollars and then after we see a path to a billion dollars. Jesus Christos, mate. They are caking, caking. And I also have to say, this makes sense to me because unlike other brands that, you know, put out crazy numbers, um, and this is privately owned, so they don't have to give all this up, but a lot of brands put out these numbers and you don't believe them because you go outside, you don't see anybody wearing it. But I see a lot of kids, even in my rundown hood part of London that I live in, I see a lot of kids wearing mainline fear of God and also essentials. I see people wearing it day to day. So clearly, 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 this is um, a thriving business. It continues. Describing those figures as a marker of progress rather than the be on end or targets, Chang echoes Lorenzo. Numbers are not what this business is all about. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's be real. The path ahead will be unique, just as the way in which Jerry has created a brand has been unique. Um, new avenues. Fear of God, which is privately owned, currently employs around 60 people only to operate the brand again showing you that you can be lean mean and strong out there i think even rick owens is the same actually if i'm not mistaken they could they're pretty lean in terms of how many people they actually hire um uh there the are 60 people from his la art city to hq according to chang there will be likely be a hundred names on the payroll by the end of the year some of the new hires might be tasked with staffing the brand's much anticipated first flagship store in la again i'm loving it i'm loving the fact that he is doing things you know, in LA, representing where he's from and putting LA on in that sort of fashion sense instead of, you know, because I'm sure he has many offers probably and easy opportunity to come and open up a store here in London and it would do crazy numbers. Like people love flipping essentials in the UK. That would do, it would kill if you open one in anywhere in Europe also if you wanted to. But the fact that he's doing his first store in LA shows you, you know, he's kind of got his head screwed on right. But also don't be surprised if the first overseas store is definitely in London or maybe in Asia somewhere. But definitely those two markets, I think, will be the first to go out um, outside the United States. It continues. Without giving up any opening date or address, Chang confirms that the store is in the works. Lorenzo says um, a planned opening to coincide with the week's show had hit some bumps in the road due to the factors beyond their control. Unflustered, he said, we know that the store will get here when the time is right. And I think you're seeing a lot of these brands doing this now, deciding to open stores, even though, even though, you know, it's probably not the greatest idea. I think it makes a lot of sense for these brands to kind of tell their stories in this somewhat unique way by having your own dedicated store where you can kind of, you know, craft everything in around it, create your own universe, bring people into your world and kind of tell your story in a way more interesting way than flat 2D lookbook images or stuff on Instagram and shit. You need to be able to tell it in a more compelling way, sound, sense, smell, touch, vibe of the people in there. It all kind of adds to it. So it's a bit of an expense. It's a big risk, but it definitely adds to the overall bottom line. And then we'll read this last bit here. It says the brand's first physical shopping shop opened at Selfridges in London two years ago. Um, Bosi Mir, is that you supposed to say his name? Bosi Mir, the retailer's director of women's wear and men's wear says this vote of confidence stemmed from existing wholesale success. So again, they're selling well wholesale, they're selling well privately on the, you know, what you call it, what's that thing called? Um, B2B, like it's crazy. It continues. Um, Jerry has been inspiring our customers for many years, Bosi says. The style, cut and composition of every item are all precisely considered. Together create their own unique look and feel that is very pure and also instantly in identifiable. This sounds like something that came out of chat GPT or something that came straight out of the flipping PR handbook. 
Like, did he actually say this? <laughs> I don't know. Let's continue. We have God's um, 21st century vision of American luxury. Definitely resonates across the Atlantic. Chang says the majority of the revenue generated in fear of God's home market, while Europe and Asia are around even. That makes a lot of sense, though, because I see a lot of European people and Asian people wearing the essentials and fear of God. So we're going neck and neck for jacking fear of God. So big up him. Um, and also this last bit here, Essentials has overtaken the mainline collection to become few of God's biggest revenue driver, Chang discloses. Imagine that. Imagine how good of a feeling that must be as a designer. You create a diffusion line. Diffusion lines are typically the more affordable line you know, for a brand or a way for you to kind of introduce people to what you do and hope that over time they can grow with you and decide to buy stuff from the mainline, Right. Imagine how proud you have to be as a designer. You get to the point where your diffusion line is now outstripping your main line. Because it, essentially what this ends up doing is it gives you more kind of luxury and more room to experiment and go crazy on your main line. Because your essentials line is, or your diffusion quote unquote line is, you know, is, is, is exceeding all expectations and allowing you to take chances on your main line that you probably wouldn't beforehand when really people like doing it the other way around. But this is pretty cool. I really do like it. I think this is awesome to see. And um, yeah, eager to see more as they kind of progress. But unfortunately for me, the actual collection, I wasn't that impressed with. I have to be honest. And I feel like maybe this goes to speak to the idea that Jerry Lorenzo's kind of focus has been all over the place in terms of opening a store, getting the business right, essentials blowing up um the adidas basketball collaboration all this malarkey is going at the same time and i feel like it maybe resonated a little bit with the clothing because i feel like a lot of the stuff that's interested in it you kind of it was all hidden under these really big wide-shouldered lapel-less overcoats and stuff which look nice but i don't think we needed so many in the collection like i think every lookbook maybe minus a couple has a massive massive overcoat um kind of you know obsc you know obscuring whatever may be underneath the clothing and you can't really get to see any of it and a lot of the attitude a lot of the spunk that you kind of know about fear of god it kind of is not there anymore and it's not even soft in like a really kind of you know um in a cute way it's just feels bland and really boring to be honest the best bits may be some of the styling nods here. There's these nice little leather ropes that are used on the other coats to kind of cinch them on the weight, on the waist to kind of give this really nice silhouette. They look really interesting. Um, there's some bits and pieces like the leather gloves. They look pretty decent. But again, I've seen a lot, enough of those with the Pradas and whatnot and the Raf Simmons um, collection. Some of these looks maybe give me an idea of what our Fear of God's all about. Look number 25 and 27. They kind of give that bit of an attitude. You've got this essentially really luxurious looking um leather tracksuit type of number in this yellow color number that looks really really nice as does this look number 25 with this really nice um leather overcoat it kind of looks similar to a, a, an army overcoat i've got in my wardrobe but instead of it being the zip it all kind of is one piece so it kind of looks like an anorak not like a smock in a way but it's made like a jacket without a zip and it's all leather looking with the same leather pants and a baseball cap that's a really nice look with the attitude and spunk I'd expect to see from Fear of God. And obviously, look number 30 is given that also. But most of it just feels really bland. It feels really dull and not really interesting. And I feel like a lot of it has to do with the fact that business is booming and this guy's focus is all over the place. So it's really difficult to kind of be bouncing from time, you know, collection to collection. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere along the line, um, Jay Lorenzo takes a step back from essentials and gives it to somebody else and focuses primarily on fear of God or vice versa. But something's going to have to give. He can't, he can't do both because, you know, taste wise and aesthetic wise, it kind of all looks the same, but doesn't. And I think fear of God essentials is now starting to look better than the main line, which is nuts to say, but I do think so. These pants here on look number 34 are quite interesting. These little tasseled frayed pants here. They may be part of the Aida's collaboration. They've got some stripes on the inside. They look rather interesting. Um, this look has the attitude that I expect to see from a Fear of God look in look number 36 with the hat um, and the overcoat and this nice shape here on the hood. But again, it just I'm plucking at straws here to kind of pull some stuff that I do like. Even maybe look number 40 again, more of the attitude I expect to see. But all of it feels like stuff that i've seen before from them so not the most interesting collection at all from them at all and i feel like 
like I said before, business is going too well for them to create anything of any interest. And the last bits of the show look like what you would deem to be part of the Adidas basketball collaboration, which again, I feel like doesn't make any sense for it to be part of the Fear of God mainline. Maybe the Adidas basketball collection, I think code-wise, aesthetic-wise, maybe would have made more sense if it was under the banner of Essentials rather than Fear of God, maybe, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I feel like that would have worked a little bit too well, but I think the rest of it just isn't that great. The bags are maybe somewhat interesting, but again, I feel like there's a lot of brands out there doing some interesting bags, so I'm not really too sure if we are lacking in these shapes in terms of these bags overall. Styling-wise, it's all right for the most part, but again, it just feels a little bit boring, just feels a little bit glum and dead, and maybe the last look here that Alton Mason is flipping flossing, it looks really cool. And also, actually... Outer Mason's look and what Jerry wore on the on the on the runway. He had some like Adidas hoodie. You can't see here in the picture, but yes, Adidas look looks really good also. Um, and I guess Outer Mason looks really nice as well in this look number fifty eight with this amazing faux fur overcoat, lapel less blazer. Um, that's kind of elongated that goes towards the top of the knees. The tailoring is really nice. It's something you have to say. Um, he's not, you know, tr I don't think formally trained in pattern cutting or whatever it may be, but the tailoring is, I think, really good. And maybe that comes from the time that he spent collaborating with Zegna that maybe gave him some inkling and some understandings and learnings as to how to pattern cut properly. But the tailoring is really, really good. But overall, maybe the most boring collection I've seen of his. And again, makes sense because business is booming and his attention has been pulled in all different places. But it wasn't my favorite. It was definitely... Definitely, definitely not my favorite.